Hi, this is Gary with DeerManage.com. In this video, I'm going to show you why deer management needs to be site or area specific. I want you to see how fawn recruitment and natural mortality can affect a deer population. I created this formula several years ago when we got tired of guessing how many deer we had on our property and how many deer we should be shooting. Most of us know that fawns are increasing our deer populations and that hunting and natural mortality are decreasing our deer populations. Before I created this form, it was difficult for us to quantify these increases and decreases. With this visual presentation, it has been a lot easier for people to see how fawn recruitment, natural mortality, and deer harvest affect the deer population. In this video, I just want to show hunters and deer managers how the fawn recruitment and natural mortality can affect a deer population by comparing two different properties that have different mortality rates and different fawn recruitment rates. Please understand that these rates can not only vary state by state, but can also vary county by county and probably even within a county. So my first example here on this property, we're estimating that we have approximately 20 different resident bucks, and by resident, I mean they spend most of their time on this property. Dota buck ratio of 2 to 1. The fawn recruitment rate over here now, we're going to make it 0 0.50. So if I do calculate, we're estimating a deer population of approximately 80 deer. Now on this property, I'm going to have a 10% mortality rate for does, estimate a 20% mortality rate for bucks, and I'm saying I'm happy with our deer population on this property, so we'd like to again next summer have approximately 20 different bucks, a 2 to 1 doe to buck ratio, and that gives me an estimated deer population of 80 deer on this property. I'm going to go over to this property here that also has 20 different resident bucks, doe to buck ratio 2 to 1, but they have a fawn recruitment rate of 0 0.80. We'll leave their mortality rate 10% for does, 20% for bucks. They also are happy with their deer population, so they'd like to end up with 20 bucks on their property and a 2 to 1 doe to buck ratio. So what happens on this property with the higher recruitment rate, they're looking at approximately 92 deer. So now let's go over to this property with the lower recruitment and look at some of our numbers. We're estimating the mortality, natural mortality for does to be 5, bucks will be 6, for a total of 11 deer lost in natural mortality. This property here, we're estimating we're going to lose 6 does and 7 bucks for a total of 13 deer. Now we look at the harvest estimate, how many deers we should shoot, and we're looking at approximately 5 does, 4 bucks for a total of 9 deer. This property with a higher recruitment, though, we're estimating that we can harvest 10 does and 9 bucks for a total of 19 deer. That's 10 more deer that can be harvested on this property because of the higher fawn recruitment rate. Now let's go down and look at the fawns that will be added next year, utilizing our fawn recruitment rate that we had established. And we're going to be adding approximately 20 fawns into the deer population next summer. And we're going to be adding approximately 32 deer on this property next summer as well. So you can see the differences of 12 deer added, additional deer added to the deer population next summer fall. So by having the higher fawn recruitment you can see the differences it can have on varying properties. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and just change the mortality rate on one of these properties. So let's take this property here, but let's go ahead and make it a 0 .80 fawn recruitment rate which then gives us the same deer population as what we had over to the right initially, but I'm going to say that this property for whatever reason has a much higher mortality rate. And I'm going to say it has a 30% mortality rate for does and bucks. Okay, And again, they would like to strive and keep their deer population the same, but let's see how that affects the numbers below. So suddenly when we come below, because of that high mortality, you can see that they're going to lose approximately 17 does to natural mortality, 11 bucks for a total of 28 deer will be lost to natural mortality. Now if we look at the harvest estimate, we can see under does it's got a negative one. That's not good news. It means we really can't shoot any does. We can shoot a handful of bucks. But what's going to happen here is we really shouldn't shoot any does. We can shoot a handful of bucks. And all we can do is hope that next season the mortality rates are going to go down to where we could then start shooting some deer. If the mortality rate doesn't go down, you will not be shooting any does on this property, and eventually it will also have an impact on your buck harvest as well. So just to pay attention here, that higher mortality rate 
can cause big issues and it is causing big issues in various areas these days. So I hope you can just see how the mortality rate and the fawn recruitment rate can cause differences in the deer that should be harvested. And with the rate varying between properties, you can see how different properties should be harvesting different numbers of deer. This formula is available in the advanced version of our software. This concludes the video on how fawn recruitment and natural mortality affect the deer population. In my next video, I will be showing examples of extremely high and extremely low fawn recruitment and natural mortality. Please check it out to see some crazy things that may happen to a deer population. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at info at deermanage.com. Thanks for watching.